If you're a new parent or about to become a parent, you're probably taking steps to protect your baby from potential dangers. To protect your baby from harm, you might think about car seats, baby gates, and outlet covers. And you're right, these are important steps to take in order to keep your child safe. But another very important part of protecting your child is with vaccination, and not just for your baby, but also for you and for the people who will be in close contact with your child to ensure that you don't pass dangerous and potentially deadly diseases to your new bundle of joy. Hi, I'm Dr. Dunlap. I'm a pediatrician and a father of three. And I'm Dr. Cool, an obstetrician and a mother of four. We're here to talk to you about one of the best ways to keep your baby healthy, vaccination. Vaccines provide protection against certain diseases that can cause serious illness or even death. They do this by encouraging the production of antibodies that recognize a particular germ and then help you to fight off that germ when you come into contact with it later. Vaccination is considered one of the greatest public health achievements in history. Vaccines are responsible for eliminating smallpox and drastically reducing the prevalence of other vaccine preventable diseases such as polio, measles, rubella, and tetanus, just to name a few. This is truly a great accomplishment considering that many vaccine preventable diseases are especially dangerous, if not deadly, to pregnant women, infants, and children. Although vaccines have drastically reduced the occurrence of these dangerous diseases, this doesn't mean that they've been eliminated. Vaccine preventable diseases can return to our area if people stop vaccinating. In fact, in the past few years, the U.S. has experienced a resurgence of whooping cough and measles, primarily among people who have not been vaccinated. It's been estimated that if more than 10% of Americans chose not to be vaccinated, our country will see more of these horrible diseases return. Fortunately, the vast majority of American parents choose vaccination for their families. When people think of vaccines, often they just think about childhood shots. However, shots are recommended for everyone throughout their entire lifespan. So it's just as important that you and other people in contact with your child, such as caregivers, grandparents, and older siblings, be vaccinated as well. Protecting your baby from diseases begins before birth. Pregnant women can and should be vaccinated in order to safeguard their health and their baby's well-being. Pregnant mothers who contract a vaccine-preventable disease are more likely to suffer severe complications from the disease than would a typical healthy adult. This is especially true when considering the flu, as pregnant women who get the flu during the second half of pregnancy are more likely than other women to suffer severe symptoms or complications such as pneumonia and can even experience premature labor and delivery. Think of it this way. A baby's first line of defense against disease is the mother's resistance to disease. Remember earlier when we discussed how a vaccine works by encouraging the body to produce antibodies? Well, the effect is no different for a mother to be. In fact, the mother will even pass some of the antibodies on to her baby before birth, preparing the baby as much as possible for life outside of the safety of the womb. In fact, studies have shown that getting a flu shot during pregnancy can decrease a baby's chances of contracting the flu for up to six months after birth. This is a two-for-one benefit that you get with vaccination during pregnancy. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or the CDC, recommends that women who are pregnant during flu season, October through May, receive the flu shot. The flu shot has been given safely to millions of pregnant women for more than 45 years. It is safe for pregnant women during any trimester, their unborn children, and for postpartum and breastfeeding women. However, flu strains change every year, so don't rely on last year's flu shot to get you through this year's flu season. The CDC recommends the Tdap vaccine for pregnant women as well. Tdap prevents tetanus, diphtheria, and whooping cough, which is also known as pertussis. Whooping cough is a respiratory infection that can cause severe coughing and makes breathing very difficult. Pregnant women are encouraged to get the Tdap shot to protect them from whooping cough and also to ensure that they pass some of the protective antibodies on to their unborn baby. This helps to protect the baby from whooping cough during the first few months of the baby's life. Babies younger than six months are more likely to catch certain infectious diseases than older children. But babies within this age group are also too young to have received all the vaccine doses needed to protect them from many of the diseases previously mentioned, as most vaccinations require a series of doses to be fully effective. 
For this reason, another great way to protect your baby from catching diseases is through the vaccination of the people who will be in close contact with your child, such as parents, siblings, grandparents, friends, child care providers, babysitters, and health care providers. Once the baby's close contacts are vaccinated, they are less likely to pass vaccine-preventable diseases to your baby. Instead, they surround the baby with protection against disease until he or she is old enough to get all of the doses of vaccine needed to be fully protected. If you have questions about shots for pregnant women or other adults, make sure you talk to your health care provider. After birth, babies begin to receive a series of childhood shots. The first shot, the hepatitis B vaccine, is given at birth. This shot is especially important here in West Virginia, since our state has the highest incidence of hepatitis B virus infection in the nation. The rest of the routine vaccination series starts at two months of age, with additional shots at four, six, 12, 15, and 18 months. Booster shots are given between four and six years of age to ensure long-term protection. That probably seems like a lot of shots, and some parents wonder whether it's safe to give so many shots to young children. However, I can assure you vaccines are safe and multiple shots can be given safely in the same doctor's visit. In fact, vaccines are researched for an average of 15 years before they are ever approved for public use, and as part of the testing process, new vaccines are always given along with other existing vaccines. The recommended vaccination schedule for children, adolescents, and adults are then developed by the CDC along with leading medical and infectious disease experts. I've had some parents ask me if vaccines cause autism. Despite a lot of controversy in the media on this topic, scientific research has shown that there is no connection between vaccines or their ingredients and autism. In fact, scientific studies conducted in the US, the UK, Sweden, and Denmark found that children who received vaccines did not have higher rates of autism. Additionally, a major safety review by the Institute of Medicine did not find any evidence that vaccines cause autism. Other organizations that have concluded that vaccines are not associated with autism include the CDC, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the American Academy of Pediatrics, and the World Health Organization, amongst many others. Vaccines are safe and effective. In fact, our children are getting better protection than ever before. The diseases that early childhood vaccinations protect against are often the most dangerous for infants and young children. So in order to be most effective, vaccines are given as early as they can be safely administered. That's why timing is so important and why a delayed vaccine schedule could be dangerous. Getting several vaccinations at once does not damage or overload a child's immune system. There is no research that shows that delaying or spreading out shots is safer. Instead, all a delayed vaccination schedule does is delay your child from being fully protected from dangerous yet preventable diseases. Following the recommended immunization schedule also helps to ensure that your child has received all required shots to begin attending daycare, preschool, and eventually kindergarten. As a pediatrician and a parent, I can tell you that I vaccinated my own kids following the recommended vaccination schedule, and I wouldn't suggest anything different for your child. So remember, protect your baby from dangerous diseases by getting your shots, encouraging your child's loved ones and caregivers to get theirs, and ensuring that your baby receives all the recommended childhood vaccinations. Talk to your healthcare provider about what immunizations are recommended for you and your child. This video is brought to you by the West Virginia Immunization Network. The West Virginia Immunization Network is a program of the Center for Rural Health Development. To learn more, please visit us online at www.wvruralhealth.org.